I've heard the question whether or not Chris Watts was ever evaluated by a psychologist come up over and over again. In my opinion, I believe he was evaluated, and this is my evidence for that. So we know that he was at Weld County Jail for his pre-trial. Following his conviction and subsequent sentencing, he was at the Denver Reception Center at the Colorado Department of Corrections, where he was evaluated as part of the classification process that all inmates go through. As part of the Interstate Corrections Compact Transfer, he was transferred to the Wisconsin Department of Correction where he also underwent a classification staffing or evaluation. In forensic psychology, the first step is to establish the purpose of the evaluation. So you can have a court-related assessment for pre-trial that can be ordered by either the defense or the uh, state an example of this is the insanity defense. After an offender has been convicted and sentenced, the purpose for the psychological evaluation takes on a different meaning. Once incarcerated, offenders have protected rights. Therefore, the state or the warden of the offender has to make sure that those rights are met, one of them being treatment services. In order to determine treatment needs, most offenders go through a psychological evaluation that consists of several tests. A standard psychological battery includes a clinical interview, an IQ test, achievement test if needed, personality measures, and any collateral information that is available, such as the offender's file, any previous history of mental illness, etc. Without boring you to death with all the different tests, I decided to review only one, and that's the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale. Intelligence in this context is defined as the global capacity of a person to act purposefully, to think rationally, and to deal effectively with his or her environment. The Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale, or WACE, is comprised of 11 subtests each of them belonging to a category that measures different areas of cognitive functioning. The four cognitive abilities that are measured comprise the full-scale IQ, or simply IQ. The results are then compared to the standardized sample, usually by age, although it can differ. Boring, I know. I think a lot of us wondered what was wrong with him? And we wondered if he was mentally ill for him to be able to do something like that. But we never knew for sure. Even Tammy Coder and Baumhofer wondered the same thing when they visited Chris in February of 2019. Here Chris tells investigators that while at the Denver Reception and Diagnostic Center, he was put through the ringer where he took 11 separate tests to figure out his IQ and found that it was 135 or 140. The question of Chris's mental state became stirred up again with the release of letters from Christopher, where Chris says, no, I've never had a psychological exam. Even if I were to have seen a doctor during my case, then anything I said could have been subpoenaed by the court or DA. He goes on about Asperger's symptoms presumably in response to one of Cato's questions. This was another reason why I was annoyed with Cato's book, because she didn't include the letters that she wrote to Christopher. Now we don't know what he was responding to. And since we are in the court of public opinion, let's look at the credibility of our sources. It would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with Shanann and the little girl's disappearance, okay? I was putting Chris on high alert that the truth was about to come out and everyone was going to know what it was. I definitely wanted to see if Chris was going to keep lying about the infidelity, so I brought up if he was having an affair. 
When I told her it was nobody else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, I mean, she knows that I wouldn't do that to her. This is a very, in the grand scheme of things, a very small thing for him to be lying about when his wife and daughters are missing for 48 hours. Why are you lying about having an affair? At that point, I took my computer out of the room to grade the charts. Grading scale, for someone who is a truth teller, we would consider them to be a plus two or higher. And we would consider someone to be deceptive if they were a negative four and below. Chris Watts scored a negative 18. Whoa, Chris and shit. Negative 18? He failed every question on the test. That deception on that polygraph causes Watts to become our primary suspect. Second source is Scribble. I mean, uh, Miss Cadle. All hell broke loose when Kimberly, a YouTuber, uploaded a video on YouTube talking about the book Letters from Christopher and how she discovered that most, if not all, of the book was plagiarized. In addition to weather reports and news articles, Cadle also copied information from Wikipedia. But most notably, a lot of the book was taken out of His Garden, Conversations with a Serial Killer by Ann K. Howard. That author was of course notified and took action right away. Conveniently, she's also a lawyer. Needless to say, Miss Sherilyn Cadle, you're in big trouble. Wait, how did I get here? I digress. The question is whether or not Christopher Watts ever had a psychological evaluation. In my opinion, given that both Chris and Cato have questionable credibility, I will say that I do believe he was tested. However, when he was talking to Cato about never having a psychological exam, I believe he was talking about the pre-trial phase. In other words, he didn't want to be evaluated because he knew that all of that information could be subpoenaed and end up in trial. However, in his interview with Tammy, Coder, and Baumhofer, he says he took 11 tests when he came to the Denver Reception Diagnostic Center. Now remember, that's the Colorado Department of Corrections. This means this had to have been post-conviction. We know Mr. Rainman has a great memory, and the fact that he said that he took 11 tests, I thought that was a weird coincidence, because if we remember, the WACE also has 11 tests. So did Chris Watts ever get psychologically evaluated? In my opinion, I think so, but only after he was sentenced and sent to the Colorado Department of Corrections. I hope you found this helpful, and let me know your thoughts and comments. Until next time.